Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a morning dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Danae. I'm an education specialist here at the Detroit Zoological Society where we celebrate and save wildlife. Today, we are at the African Watering Hole uh, right across from Zebras, and we have a special guest, Matt, our nice bird to see you guys. It's good to see you again, Matt. So today, we are going to focus on a very special bird, the saddle-billed stork. So you can't really see him at the moment because he's all the way on the other side, but here's a picture of what they will usually look like. Okay, and he is actually all the way in the back, all the way back there, that little dot. All right, so, Matt, does the does he have a name, or does it have a name? Yeah. So this is uh, we have a male saddle-billed stork, and his name is Cleet. He uh, he's a really cool bird, and he's uh, been with us for almost ten years now. Oh wow. Okay. Um, how does this animal particularly get the name saddle-billed stork? Yeah, a very unique name. Uh, so saddle-billed comes from the saddle-like structure right at the base of its bill. You'll, and yeah, thanks for showing the picture there. You'll see that little yellow right in there forms this nice saddle and that, that gives it the saddle-billed name. And it, it's a huge beak, might I add. Mm -hmm. Saddle-billeds have an enormous beak that on that male is probably over a foot long. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, so you said he's been here for about 10 years. Um, yeah, he came, uh, he came, I think it was 2011 from another zoo. Okay. And he paired up with a older female we had who has unfortunately passed on since then. Oh. But uh, he's, he's done really well here and he really enjoys being out in this yard. Okay, uh, do you happen to know how old he might be? So I forget, uh, yeah, no, he's, I believe he's 19 years old. Okay. So he's, he's certainly not young. He's getting up there for a uh, saddle-billed stork. In the wild, he's a very old saddle-bill. They might live, and it, hey, at least he's coming a little closer now. <laughs> Hopefully you guys will be able to see him a little better. Mm -hmm. But the saddle-builds might live a couple decades. And uh, here at the zoo, well, they get good health care, so they might live as long as even 30 years. So he's, he's still got plenty of life left. Okay. Um, what does their uh, diet consist of usually? Yep. So, oh, and here he comes over. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first thing I like to look at when we're looking at what we think a bird eats is their beak. So you can see he's got a very long, strong beak, and he is a carnivorous bird. So he'll be eating all kinds of different fish, maybe even small mammals, frogs, reptiles. Uh, and what he'll do a lot of times is you can see the nice pond he has in his yard and that, that's exactly what he'd do. He'd be going around in ponds in a wetland and maybe kicking in the muck and stirring up fish and then and fishing for them. And as he's fishing for them, then he'd come along some of those other prey species like frogs and or small mammals. Okay. So you said he'd be waddle, waddling around in the muck or in kind of wetlands. Is that where they usually live? Yeah. So this species is an African species and they live throughout wetlands, kind of throughout Central Africa, getting not too far south, but uh, a bit south in Africa. And they're mainly going to be around water, around different uh, wetland areas, even maybe rivers. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've seen him kind of strutting around here. Um, earlier we saw him kind of stretching his wings out. Uh, would visitors see any other type of behavior or? Yeah, and unfortunately he was showing off for us about <laughs> five <laughs> minutes before we uh, started the talk. So a lot of times you might see him come over to his nice pond and he'll do that same beautiful natural behavior where he's kind of looking around in the water, uh, kicking his legs, uh, hoping to find some different prey items. Another uh, cool behavior you might see is bill clacking. Okay. So um, if you guys aren't familiar with bill clacking, storks don't really um, make vocalization. Okay. They may hiss. They can make some hissing noises, especially young ones. 
or they make noise by clacking their beaks. So that's a, definitely a real cool behavior you might see if he was potentially showing what is his territory or, or just showing how it's his yard. He'll, they'll throw their head back and uh, smack their beak together real quick, the upper and lower mandible, and make a nice clacking noise. Oh, wow, okay. Sorry, I was trying to get a good look at him here. <laughs> yeah, he, you get him a little bit? <laughs> Yeah, I think I did. He's out. Okay. Um, I guess able to see him all year round. So I know right now it's um, it's still pretty pretty warm. I guess it's a little decent, not too cold. Yup. So he is, uh, it's probably a little harder to see him in the winter because during the heart of this winter, it's just too cold for him to be out in this yard or be out in the snow. Okay. So during, during the winter, he will generally go off to a breeding area. And the, and the timing works out perfect because the winter is their our winter is their breeding season, oh, okay. and that's what's on their mind. So they're not going to want to be all over in the yard. They're going to be busy making their nests. So we have some really large areas uh, behind the scenes where they get, they generally get to build their nests and go through a nice breeding cycle. Oh, okay. So um, we talked about the type of habitats they usually live in. You said wetlands. Um, yeah. So how has this exhibit been kind of replicated to kind of mimic that habitat? Yeah, so this, as the exhibit is, we're at the African watering hole here. It is a nice wetland exhibit. We've got our big pond where he'd like to forage and oftentimes will flood a part of the yard. So you'll get more of that wetland type scenario. Mm -hmm. And then it's also got a nice expanse of grassland and a couple larger trees. And that would be like a really nice mimic of a, a breeding territory for one of these guys because they'll usually be by a nice food source with a big body of water. Mm -hmm. But they be, they'll also be in an area where there's, you know, a big tree or two but not foresty because they're going to want a more isolated tree and that's where they're going to breed. They're going to build a nest high up in that tree, maybe even 80 foot up into the tree. Oh wow. They'll build a, a big platform type nest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this really emulates a, a nice area for them. Okay. Speaking of really tall trees, um, he's not as close as we would probably like to to see in order to see how tall he is, but do you happen to know how tall he is? Yeah, no, they're, they're really tall birds. Uh, Cleet is, uh, he's almost as tall as I am. He's just okay. over five feet when he stands up straight. Mm -hmm. Really, really tall bird. And uh, we'll get into a little bit as well. So uh, the males are a little bit bigger than the females. Okay. And he, he weighs about yeah, around 15 pounds, which is a nice size for a male, though they'd be within a couple pounds of that. Mm -hmm. And then the females would weigh a few pounds less than that. And as far as sexual dimorphism, males and females looking differently, mm -hmm. there is a little bit in this species. Size is one factor. The males are bigger than the females. But there's also something really cool about them so the iris on the eye of the birds in the males it's it's a browny dark blackish okay and then sweet you're going to show this picture so in the picture this is actually a female and it's a really pretty bright yellow i don't know if you guys can see that in the picture but the all the females irises are yellow and the males is dark so it's it's really unique difference yeah that is pretty cool um okay so does the saddle bill get along with other animals in the habitat i see we have an ostrich yep. here we have two other elands are also here in this exhibit yep and we even have a, uh, another pair of white storks who of course is hanging out way back on the other side but okay yeah because i mean it's it's a good question because this is a, a powerful dominant bird but um he does very well with the other animals as in any situation, we always do a slow introduction to make sure that each specific animal will get along, but everybody gets along uh, very nicely out here, and, and we don't see negative interaction. That's good. Um, is the Saddleville stork population in danger at all? Um, so they, they have kind of an interesting population and one that we don't have all the information that we wish we had on okay. so they are currently considered a least concerned species but 
It's a, a little bit of a misnomer because as we're seeing throughout the world, we're losing wetland at a rate quicker than we would like. Right. And they are a wetland dependent bird. And also they can be in very remote areas and have very large ranges. So when you look at population numbers, it's a very broad range with uncertainty, but at most people think there are maybe 15 to 17,000 adults. So really, really a pretty small population which makes them more susceptible to to decline so they are least concerned but I think it's certainly one that we want to learn more on and, and be be concerned about because as we lose wetland it really could impact it right true so speaking of wetland um, loss it it does happen here because we do have wetlands um, here in the US and absolutely our, our state's full of nice wetland and right. it, it's just a, such an important part of the environment that that we need to protect mm -hmm. and you know it's it's just our actions every day that can help protect that you know just teaching our children our children to be responsible with water all of our habits that can lead to better water usage so that we're keeping the water in our environment safe and clean right and then just as a whole the the wetlands that we have we want to continue to protect and and get more of them preserved so as a community, you know, we just want to protect all, all those areas we can to keep the environment safe. It's very true. Well, thank you so much, Matt. That was a lot of very good information. I hope our visitors got were able to watch this awesome video. And if not, then you guys can definitely watch it later. Um, as far as the wetland loss, I think there might be um, a, a citizen science project called Adopt a Drain. Um, I don't exactly have too much information on that, but um, if you guys are at home, you can probably Google it and see how you can participate in that. Um, and you can also tune in to some of our educational programs where our curator of education, Mike, also tells us how we can protect our wetlands as well. So thanks again for tuning in for another dose of virtual vitamin Z. Again, we are here at the African watering hole right across from zebras for those who missed it early on. And make sure you guys are staying safe and enjoy the rest of your day.